Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Justin here, and we are on free code camp today. What the algorithm that we are looking at today is called the quick sort. It's under the algorithm section, which is also under the coding interview prep section. So guys, if it's your first time in my channel here today, I release these type of algorithm videos on almost a daily basis. But not only that, I also release React tutorial videos. Anything related to coding, you will find it in my channel. So if you like my content, please click like and subscribe below. Anyways, on with the quick sort. So compared to the other ones that we've done, uh, such as the bubble sort, selection sort, and search sort, this is a little bit harder and it will require recursion. So hopefully you guys are familiar with the concept of a recursive function. Let me read the directions for us real quick. Here we will move on to an intermediate sorting algorithm, quick sort. Quick sort is an efficient recursive divide and conquer approach to sorting an array. In this method, a pivot value is chosen in the original array. The array is then partitioned into two subarrays of values less than and greater than the pivot value. We then combine the result of recursively calling the quicksort algorithm on both subarrays. This continues until the base case of an empty or single item array is reached on which we return. The winding of the recursive calls returns us the sorted array. Quicksort is a very efficient sorting method providing O n log to the n performance on average. It is also relatively easy to implement. Oh, that's subjective. These attributes make it a popular and useful sorting method. All right, guys. So, uh, if you have never tried the quick sort before, these, this direction was probably very hard to follow. So, what I have for you guys here today is please, before you continue on to try to solve this on your own or watch my video, please check out this short video. It's a three minute video by a computer file. It's called Quick Sort hyphen computer file. I'll put the links in the description below, but please check this video out because we're going to be implementing literally what they show us visually. Like if you look at this, they show us a pretty cool visual example here, if you could see that. So this is what we're going to be doing when we solve this quick sort and we will be using a recursive function. So guys, please pause the video now, watch that video and also try out the algorithm on your own. Try to use what you see, what you learn from this video as a guidance and try to solve that on your own. And then come back to this video and see how I solve it. Okay, so now I'm gonna assume that you guys have already watched the computer file quick sort video and tried this algorithm out on your own. Whether you got it right or not, that's not the important part, but at least you tried. Now I will show you how I will go about solving this. So we are going to be using a recursive call. This function will be a recursive function that we use and we are literally going to implement what the visualization that the computer file video has shown us. So we are gonna take our rightmost element as our pivot number and make two subarrays. One array having the values less than this pivot number and one array, the other array will have values greater or equal to this number. Now, the reason why I'm putting the numbers equal to this number on the right side, that's just preference. You could have put, that, put those in the left side as well. It doesn't really matter. You just have to be consistent. So again, I'm going to make two subarrays with this, with all these values here. The numbers that's less than 92, put in one array. The numbers greater or equal to, put in another array. And then I will recursively call our quicksort function on the smaller subarrays, the two subarrays that we have built. So let me show you guys here. Now with recursive functions, we always must have an edge case and our edge case for now, although we may change this in the future, just to refactor our code somewhat, I will say if array.length is equal to one, that will be our edge case. So if there's only one, if we keep on calling this function and we somehow get to a point where we are calling it for like one element like so, then that will be our edge case. And in which case, we're just gonna return the array that this function has received. So this function will always return an array. Now that we have taken care of our edge case, let's build up what they have shown us in the computer file video. So we're gonna first define our pivot, which will be the last element of the array, array dot, uh, what am I doing? Array at index array dot length minus one, like so. Now we're gonna do a for loop with uh, for our parameter array 
every element except the last one because the last one we're using as a pivot so let's do that for let i is equal to zero i is less than array dot length minus one because we don't want to have the pivot number as part of the for loop i plus plus and what we're gonna do here is we're gonna build up two arrays like i said the left array left side of the pivot and the right side of the pivot but in order to do that in order to build up build up those two arrays we need to define maybe we'll call the left the one left array and we will initialize as an empty array and we will also have a right array now let's have the condition in start a for loop we will say if our um, array at our current index is less than our pivot number we want to push that value into our left array like so else if it's greater or equal to that pivot number we will push it to the right array like so so now once we have gone through this whole for loop we have built up two arrays they could be empty, maybe, maybe because the pivot number was the greatest number. Like what if this was the rightmost number, uh, in which case this was a pivot, then every single number will be on the left array and no numbers will be on the right array. So we had to consider that. So let's first consider the most ideal, maybe it's not the most ideal, but we will say if we have left array dot length, whoops, left r dot length is greater than zero, and right array that length is greater than zero we're gonna do something that's one case else if maybe we only have left array greater than zero but not right array greater than zero then we're gonna do something and finally the final case is the opposite of the second case if right array that length is greater than zero however i don't need to make that an else if because by the time if we hit this else right here we know we are dealing with a case where we only have a right array not a left array our left array is empty uh, because if we only have one number in our array remember we had this edge case here we just returned the array so we would have never even hit all these lines of code here so these are the three scenarios we are dealing with and we actually don't need this return down here any longer. So we will say if we are dealing with this case where we both have a left array and a right array. Remember, we have to return an array. This function returns an array. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build, make an array like that. However, I'm going to use what's called a spread operator and recursively call this function to our left array and then put the pivot in the middle, and then spread operator, the quick sort of the right array. Let me uh, explain to you guys what this is happening. So we're calling the quick sort twice, once on the left array, once on the right array. Now remember, this function always returns an array, so this will return an array, and we are spreading the result of that immediately right after. These three dots is a spread operator, and what that pretty much does is it separates the elements in the array in comma separated values. So for example, let's just suppose that the result of the quick sort of left array was uh, array of one, two, three, right? Then what the spread does is it just converts that to one, two, three, literally. So we just have one, two, three here instead of this whole function in the spread. Hopefully that makes sense. Now we are gonna do a similar thing for the second case, except we don't have a right array, right? So we, there's no reason to call it on the empty right away. So we'll just leave it like that. And finally, we are going to have the opposite case where we don't have a left array, like so. Now, if everything went to plan, this should be the correct implementation of quicksort. Uh, just like the way that they described it in the Computer 5 video. Let's see if it works by testing it on this test array right here. So I'm going to declare a variable const r is equal to this and i'm going to console log the result of calling quick sort on our array like so run the code and it does appear to be sorted let's see if we code camp is happy with the solution bring this over here run the test and we pass okay so now Let's think, let's think about some ways that we could refactor this code to make it a little bit more neat. So one thing we can do is this. 
you see this for loop right here. Uh, I personally, whenever possible, I like using four of loops instead of a traditional for loop like this. Uh, so let me, let's try replacing here. We could do for const um, element of array. So that will replace this our array at i. However, this poses a problem because remember what we did here? We excluded the last element because the last element is our pivot, right? So we don't want to loop through our pivot. So this one, however, doing it the for of loop, it doesn't, we also include the pivot, which we don't want. So one way we could bypass and not loop through the pivot is to call slice on this where we just get every element except the last one. And the way that you could do that is just start at zero index, slice makes a shallow copy of the array, and we pass it as two parameters. The first one is a starting index, and the second index, second parameter is the index in which you want the array to end. So it will not include the, the index that we put here. And so we're just gonna put the last index here, telling JavaScript, don't include the last element. That's what this means. So this will essentially be almost the same identical as this one. Now we still need the if condition inside here. We will say, however, instead of saying array at i, we will say if l, if the element is less than the pivot, then we want to push the element. Otherwise, we want to push the element like so. Uh, and if you want, you could even shorten this a little bit longer by using the ternary operator. We could say, L is less than pivot. If that's the case, left array dot push of L. Otherwise, right array dot push of L, like so. So that could replace these five or so lines of code like that. And we could erase this traditional for loop because we just replaced that. And what else can we do? So another thing that we could, let, let's just make sure that this still works. Let me run the code. Yep, and we still have it sorted. Now, one thing that I always talk about in these sorting functions is I like keeping my function pure, but this one, uh, I, by the way, what I mean by a pure function is the parameter that I give it, which is this array, this example, I don't want it to mutate this variable here. So I, when if I were to console log immediately after just the array, I want this to be unsorted, not sorted. I just want the result to be sorted, but the array itself is not sorted. So that's what a pure function is. Let's run the code. And as you can tell, the second array that we got back is unsorted. It is actually the original array that we fed it. So we are dealing with the pure function, so that's good. However, what we can do is we could shorten this out somewhat. Uh, look at our edge case. We are saying if array that length is equal to one, then return the array. And the reason why we have these three conditions here is because we can't call the quick sort on an empty array because our function doesn't account for that. But we could remedy that by instead of saying that this has to be equal to one, that's our edge case, we could say if it's less than or equal, less than or equal to one, then that will be our edge case. So we could, if the array's length is one, we will come here. Or if the array's length is zero, we will just return back an empty array like so and that will still work. So we could, because of our new updated edge case, we don't need all of this nonsense here. All we need is return this, such that if the left array or the right array is empty, it will still be fine. Okay, like that. Let's just make sure that it still works. I run the code and it is still sorted. Now let's see if free code can be still satisfied with this solution. Now look at that, it's already a lot cleaner run the test and we still pass. Okay guys, that was quick sort. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this and hopefully you guys understood what was going on. I try to write this in the most uh, explicit way possible of what a quick sort actually is. I've, I've seen some other uh, YouTube videos about how they implement a quick sort and they might have a more efficient quick sort, meaning they're not building up all these crazy arrays like what we're doing right here. However, I personally prefer this solution right here because it's more obvious as to what's going on. So hopefully you guys enjoy this guys. If you guys again like my content, please stay subscribed and I will release other videos like this. The next time we meet, we will be doing the merge sort and that is the final sort of this algorithm section. So I'll see you guys next time. Happy coding.